In 2016, scientists on Earth detected a fast radio burst from a distant region of space with no observable stars. This signal contained a constant series of data packets and a decryption key. Once it was decrypted, the data contained a number of transmissions from two planets in a binary system. Included in the data was a translation matrix that researchers used to translate the entries as best as possible into English. The following transmissions were declassified by the scientific community and given to us to present. Log entry Vela 29, Vela Rotat 2621, cycle 4 of the third annual. Hey, hey, Chone, guess who's off their mandated house arrest from all technology? Feels like it's been forever. Honestly, I can't imagine how Dad and Auntie Iria could stand to not hear from each other for two full rotats at a time. Going without my hand terminal for that long and not being able to talk with my friends here was a nightmare. I had to actually leave the house and talk to people in person. Can you imagine that? Thankfully, your message came in about halfway through all of this, and I got to feel like I heard from someone. Dad was able to get the message and bring it home. He told the reef goons that it was just part of his normal correspondence with your mom, and they didn't think too much of it. Things are still a little crazy here. The riots the council members spoke of have finally started to die down. There's still a lot of tension between the sects, but that seems to always be the case. La Arva keeps petitioning the council to get the lander back to Chonar, and Tumasir keeps fighting it. I really don't know the details of the situation there, just what Dad tells me. They kind of blocked my access at the radio labs. I guess when you hack into their systems and send out a planet-wide leak of information, they tend to see you in a different light. Thankfully, Mom didn't have to stay locked up for long. They took her to one of the Reef Guard facilities for questioning, and then suddenly, there was this outpouring of support from other labs across the planet. They apparently had all of the same information I leaked and were going to release it. I guess I reeled that one in before the rest of them. In exchange for them not releasing the rest of the info, ReefGuard decided to drop all charges on my mom, and she's back at work in her lab now. They weren't happy about it, so they're keeping an eye on her, and I'm completely banned from the facilities. I'm sure you can ask your mom for more info since Dad is still sending messages to her. She may actually know more details since my parents aren't allowed to discuss it with me. I have to thank you for the broadcast of your mom's press conference. Dad decided to take it to work and show it to the council. He didn't say it came from you, and they worked with ReefGuard to release it to the general population. They felt it would help alleviate a lot of the concerns that Haimavena was trying to invade us. I know, pretty crazy, right? Considering that it would take about 2,000 Rotats to send anything from there to here, but people think weird things. Between the talk of your microbots and the math on the distance, people started to calm down and look into ways they could help your situation and ensure something like that doesn't happen here. Speaking of which, microbots! That's crazy! To think that they were these little robots floating around in the air there. Did you breathe any of them in? Are they like inside you right now? What if they were what caused you to throw up all over your dorm room when you were in university? I still tell my friends that story. Sorry. Totally not sorry. Also, what's with the colony ships that your planet sent out? Do you think that there are other Haimavena colonies out there? Though, I guess they would be Haimavala Prime colonies. Just imagine all those people out there drifting around, looking for a place to settle down. Kind of makes me wonder if that's why they sent the satellite and lander here. It's weird to think that they could have landed here, and we would be just another part of the Haimavala Empire. No offense, but I'm kind of glad they didn't. I'm thinking about doing some traveling of my own soon. One of my friends is helping me build a wideband site to catalog all my travels, and I can go talk to people in different cities around Seneth to see how people are handling all the news, both here and from your region. I think it will help people get a better understanding of what life is really like for everyone, both here and there. Apparently, I already have a little bit of a following based on that thing I sent out, so (laughs) it's a good depth to start from. How are things at university? Did you graduate yet? Come on, hurry up. We will never get to meet in person unless you get on that new design for a spaceship and get up there. May the waves guide you. Ori. Log entry, Haimavina 29. 2301. First year in the Age of Enlightenment. Hey, hey, Ori. 
Welcome back to the future. Did you have to purchase all new devices? I bet your hand terminal was totally out of date. I'm still resisting getting a new handy myself, mostly because I like this one. It even survived getting dropped in a hot spring. Don't ask. I'm glad to hear the charges against your mom were dropped. The way my mother describes prison, it's no sheltered cove, and even minimum security is still prison. I used to think she was exaggerating, but I'm not so sure anymore. How are your parents doing? Did your dad get my latest article on array analysis? I'm curious about his opinion. If he says what I think he will, then I can prove one of my Heimskur colleagues wrong. Oh, so check this out. We are in a new age. During the centennial celebration, they revealed the, wait for it, age of enlightenment. I swear, I have no idea who comes up with this stuff. It's probably a government commission, and I bet my mom sits on it. Now, despite the stupid name, the celebration was epic. The finale was the controlled deorbiting of a bunch of old decommissioned satellites. It looked like a meteor shower, only bigger. It was the coolest thing I have ever seen. Anyway, as I understand it, the nanobots go dormant when there is no environmental pollution. There are a number of competing theories, but they seem to return to their machine once completed and do not settle in any biological entity, and I haven't seen any reports on what threshold of pollution actually triggers them. Robotics engineers at EC and a few other companies have found steadily decreasing numbers of the nanos as pollution levels drop. Of course, there are a bunch of crackpot and conspiracy theorists who claim that the nanobots are the reason why mana aren't prone to disease or cancers anymore. So no, me puking all over my room had more to do with cheap proxia, a stupid dare from Frida, and my old bastard of a flatmate than it did tiny robots. But I'm happy to keep your friends amused. Speaking of stupid, you will never guess what Frida is doing now. Remember when I told you after university graduation she took a job at a segback company? Well, she decided to take a year off to compete in the Hydra Moon Ocean Regatta. One of her wealthy clients talked her into racing. They completely sponsored her bid and bought the segbat. Anyway, Frida should land back in Hopnina in less than a week. I still can't believe she did it. I still can't believe our dad let her. I don't know if I told you, but my grandfather died doing that race. My father says he's okay with her sailing, but mom says he hardly sleeps. She has a satcom link so we can talk to her, and her segbat has a locator so we can track her. Currently, she's just off the eastern coast of Yorth. She's doing very well and may even win her segbat class. Even if she gets in last, she will be the youngest mana to ever solo circumnavigate the planet nonstop. I've told you before how good a sailor Frida is. My father says she just has a natural gift for reading the wind on the water. Frida has a natural gift for everything. I swear she's smarter than Long Amafifi, but she decided to go to the Art Institute to draw. Not that it mattered. She still went to Hopnina University and graduated with a nautical engineering degree two years early. And here's me, studying in the middle of the night and looking down the barrel of a wave with another five years of coursework and postdoctoral work. I swear, Ori, what was I thinking? I thought Hopnina University was hard, but Strontheim Polytechnic is shredding me. Everyone here is smart. Some of them aren't very nice about it, and there's only so much funding to go around. I doubt I'll make any friends, but I'm here for my PhD, not a popularity contest. Thought I could be out sailing. I haven't really thought about postdoc fellowships, but I'll probably end up at Bergstad. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to work for them, but that means I'll be working for my mom. At this point, pretty much everyone is. Uncle Carl may be the owner of Werkstatt, but mom actually runs that place. It's kind of funny now, looking back on her old transmissions to your dad and hearing her complain about Long Amafifi. The well-known family names aren't looking so hot these days, especially those that belong to the oldest families to survive the Sidest Anda. They'll look at us differently, but at least we're not Fjallstads. Oh, mother, do they have it bad now. Imagine learning that your ancestors destroyed the planet. I know Juniper Fjallstad from university. She was the know-it-all with the purple flutter I told you about. I heard she bailed on her psychology program, just up and quit after that press conference. Apparently, she flew back to Napua and is just hanging out at her parents' estate. 
The press has been pretty good about not blaming them, but I know it's not been easy. I know my mom is dying to tell your dad, but I got your message first. Werkstatt finally got good seals on Randier Station, and the station's life support has stabilized. They have most of the infrastructure running as well, like doors and stuff. This is great because now the personnel up there can work in relative safety and comfort, though I'm told they still have to wear emergency vac suits in case of an accident. Their work is now as much detective as anything else because every file they have encountered is encrypted. There's a lot of work to be done. Trust me, everyone talks about the colonies here too. And I agree with you. The lander was probably sent to Vela to determine if it was a habitable planet. You guys really aren't all that far away in space terms. My mom thinks Vela wasn't chosen because there was already sentient life there. Uncle Carl thinks your planet might be too warm for us. Who knows? As far as the colonies are concerned, we have no idea where they are, how many there were, or even if they survived. But if we play advocate and assume they survived, I doubt they're much farther along than we are now. They would have had to start from basically nothing. They probably died anyway, and good riddance. They left us all here to die. I think it's kind of silly that the sects are rioting over some ancient pieces of equipment. Why do they really want them back? I get that the lander is a religious symbol, but is it like the whole lander? Would they accept the frame? I mean, what are they planning to do with it? Plug it in? I don't really understand religion, let alone an alien one. This just seems weird to me. I'm glad you're back, Leetla, and I'm looking forward to the pictures from your travels. I need some new ones for my flat. Maybe if I work hard enough, I'll get to see them for myself someday. Then on Talenda, Helgi. Log entry Vela 30. Vela Rotat 2623. Cycle 6 of the 8th Annual. Greetings from Trenar, Chone. I made it out of Laar. It's the first time I've left there since my dad brought me down here to watch the first launch of Velens going into space. I only remember drops and splashes of that event, certainly nothing of the trip down and back. Really, it was just seeing the rocket lift off the pad that has really stuck with me. That and watching Dad well up. It was like he was finally saying goodbye to Papa Dezen. Him holding me so tight that I could barely breathe. Well, the area has certainly grown since then. A whole new city infrastructure has been built near the new launch facility, and a memorial was placed on the original site of the first launch pad that got destroyed. Mom told me that it was a really dark time for Vela back then. I've been speaking to so many people in the area for my new wideband site, most of them barely recall what happened back then. You know what they say, new waves wash away old scars. I'm attaching some photos with the new facility in the distance and the memorial. I hope they capture the grandeur of the site. Oh, before I forget, I spoke with Dad about your article before I left. He said something along the lines of, he needs to look into refinement of the frequency and to look at recalibrating the lower band to filter out any electromagnetic radiation. I'm just going to assume you know what that means. I may have a gift for talking and understanding computer systems, but when it comes to Dad and his signals, I am just sailing without a direction. I guess I'll leave all those beeps and squeaks to you and Dad. Oh, hey, that reminds me. Did Frida win her race? I'm still in shock that she took up racing. I never thought of her as much of the risk-taking type. She always seemed to be the more even-keeled of you two. You know, the plotter. She's so good with all the creative stuff that I could totally see her as a Segbat designer like your dad. Maybe someone that paints them all those crazy colors. Definitely excited for her going out and exploring her wild side, though. I'm sure that your dad probably made sure that hers was the safest Segbat on the sea in that race. How did he handle the news of her racing? Trenar is swirling with activity. They are doing launch after launch from the facility here. All the launch pads around the world have been sending stuff up at an accelerated rate. I think the VSA is trying to catch up to Haimavena lately. Some of the people I spoke to here are pretty excited about it, but most just see it as the new normal. VSA is sending up a bunch of new communications and positioning satellites. 
old ones are getting repaired and upgraded by some of the teams going up. It feels weird that you would decommission the old ones and bring them down. Vela likes to make use of everything, if it still sails and all. The idea of using them as a celebration is very neat, though. I bet they looked amazing as they rained down. The new sats are a huge help to people here, and I think that most people don't even realize the impact that it has on their lives. They just use the tech and go about their daily business. This is what I wanted to learn about people for my interviews. I've already started talking to folks in the area about all the latest news for Vela. It's pretty much focused on what's going on in the world. I spoke with one family that had some great views on schools and why they thought that the idea of staying together, like my school did, is great and really builds a strong relationship with each other. Meantide, there were three other Velens I spoke to that felt like having a school was just too much to deal with at this time. With everything going on in technology and space exploration, they wanted to focus on their own lives and not have to worry about starting a school. It's strange to hear you talking about your family names. In our society, we're all only named after the ones that raised us. I doubt there's any real way to track lineage like you do there. Most of Vela likes to live more in the now than looking to the past. All of the population is controlled with the mating ceremonies. The ones I talked to just weren't interested in participating. It sounds like your classes are getting to be a bit tough. Thankfully, I did my basics and got out as fast as I could. I majored in communications with a minor in general technology. It wasn't any sort of super advanced degree like what you're working on, but it'll work for what I want to do. I'm sure that wherever you end up, you will take the place by storm. You've been growing up with tech your whole life, and with your mom doing what she does, it's in your scales. With any luck, you could get in with Verkstadt and head up to Randier. You would be the first person I know to make it up into space. Dad apparently used to talk with the astronauts here before they would go up, mostly to talk about repairs and modifications they were doing, but I never actually got to meet any of them. So, get your frigid butt up there. I want to hear firsthand what it's like. In all of my interviews, one of the most amazing drips was that most of the people didn't even know about the colony ships from your planet. I guess your mom was right. Every cycle, life doesn't just hit on the things that you or I care about. The news of it was all over the planet, and then there was my broadcast of it. I was aghast that some people didn't even know about it. The ones that did just dismissed it as just the same old news from Vina. The only people still crazy about it are the La Arva sect. Even after they were presented with evidence of the lander being from Haimavina, they still go off on how it's not really from there, and that it was sent from above to remind them not to dig too much into technology. Like, it was an omen that we would all become robots or something. I heard a rumor that some folks in the lab were thinking about building a mock-up of the lander using the documentation that my dad's team did. They were joking about sending it to Chonar. I'm not sure if that was meant as a practical joke or not, but it made me chuckle. The one thing that all of the people I've spoken to are talking about a lot is fusion energy. I guess a while back your mom mentioned something to my dad about a plant that Haimavina found on a moon. Well, he must have heated the pool. When he started looking into it, he found some old reports on the subject, and since then, the labs in Laar have reopened the research, and with some of the latest advances they've discovered, they made some huge waves inland. It could change a lot of energy production here and could be good for us. Now there's talk of building a full plant out in Nosanar that would power nearly all of Seneth. That's about 600 Batus northeast of Laar. It would mean a lot of new jobs and growth for that area. It's on the list for my travels, so I'll let you know how it is when I finally make it up there. Keep your head in those books, and may the waves guide you. Ori Log Entry, Haimavina 30, 2303, Age of Enlightenment Hey, hey, Ori. Thanks for the photos, Leela. I have them sitting on my desk at work. It's my motivation to keep studying, even though right now I'm ready to quit. I really hope I wasn't as much of a fisca as some of these undergraduates are when I was younger. It's enough to make me want to try my hand at sailing. Honestly, I'm a bit jealous that you're working for yourself. That is really impressive and very brave. I'm glad you are finding success with your site and people are responding to you. So far, I'm known for several marginally interesting papers and the worst physics class three of my students ever sat through. 
I mention how much these little punks annoy me? I told my mom about what you were doing, and she got a little misty, and said she was really proud of you. If you could send her some shots of you doing interviews, I think she would love that, because I'm pretty sure she misses being in the field. She says that was her favorite part about being at JCN, even though it almost got her killed a couple of times. She has weird ideas about what constitutes fun. Hang on for the obligatory Big Brother speech. Please be careful when interviewing strangers. I've heard plenty of stories from my mom about her time as a field reporter and the overly persistent fans, threats, and general weirdness of interacting closely with others. So, be careful out there. See? That wasn't so bad, right? I'm clearly having second thoughts about school. This is no longer fun. Not that it ever really was, but now it feels like work. I think that's probably normal, but I'm worried that something I love is maybe becoming something I have to do. Is that weird? I don't know. I am increasingly certain that I don't want to teach or spend my life in a lab. I still want to walk on one of the moons. Clearly, I need to put some thought into this when I'm not taking a break from grading papers. Adding to my disillusionment, the last few weeks have been a serious blow to my ego. During a symposium last month, I got into a huge argument with one of my professors. In public, in front of most of my advisory panel and the staff of the Advanced Engineering and Physics Department. I was right. She knew I was right. And I still managed to get trolled into looking like the petulant, entitled rich kid playing at being a scientist. Ori, I have published seven peer-reviewed articles on advanced plasma propulsion drives. I know what I'm talking about. And there she was, lecturing me on particle escape velocity, drive count alignment, and microflux magnetic containment systems. I guess I wouldn't have been so upset if she hadn't done it in front of my students and advisors. And no, I... I haven't worked up the courage to ask her about it yet. Frida finished the race safe and sound and won her segback class, as expected. It was a pretty incredible moment for our family, mostly for my dad and grandmother Elle. My sister is the youngest mana to ever solo circumnavigate the planet nonstop. Damn. The press barely covered the actual winner of the race. Frida was on the cover of a ton of sports broadsheets and had a bunch of interviews and was pretty wild there for a bit. She was surprisingly cool about the whole thing. She's a sailing darling. Now she's back at the marina. She started a band with some of her friends. I hate to admit it, but they're actually pretty good. Anyway, I told her that you thought she was the even-keeled one. And she laughed. Then until Enda... Helgi. Log entry, Vela 31. Vela Rotat 2625. Cycle 10 of the third annual. Hey, hey there, Mr. Frowny Flaps. Cheer up. You have so much going on. It's understandable to be frustrated and down about your classes and workload, but you need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. The things you're doing will eventually end up helping people. Those students that you're teaching, they will go on to do something else and potentially impact someone else's life with what you taught them. One of the things my dad taught me is that enough small ripples can affect the flow of rivers. The little things that seem daunting now will have effects for years to come. You're learning and imparting that learning on others right now, but who knows? That one super annoying student may cure your nanobot issue 10 rotats from now. Don't give up. Your small ripples can create a wave. One of the things I've learned on my oh-so-extensive travels is that each and every one of us has the potential to impact the world as we know it. We aren't just numbers or statistics, no matter what the council may say when they look at the population. Sometimes it seems like all they see are numbers, and they don't really pay attention to the impact that a single Velen can have on the whole of society. I've been experiencing it more and more when I meet people in new places. Every one of them has a story and is an individual. The council may see that a certain number of Velens live in a city and do work, or you may look at your students or peers and see that it's a room full of Hymavenans. I've started to see the individuals for what they are. Stories, 
accomplishments and potential. So you should believe me when I say that what you're doing will make a bigger splash than you think. On that wave, I'm now visiting a small village north of Trenar called Druskar. It's really small and very quaint. They're mostly a salt farming community. I wish you could see the marsh fields and salt collection operations in person. It's really breathtaking. The whole village is built on these stilts, and it expands well into the waters along the coast. Instead of building up, like most cities do, they have started expanding outwards into the waters. The further out, the deeper the stilts go into the sea. The older part of the village is still mostly on land and in the marshes, but as technology got better, newer and stronger stilts allowed them to grow further out. It's really amazing. I'm staying with a lovely couple who run one of the salt farms here, and it's so comforting and different from anywhere else I've been so far. One of the key focus points of my latest article for the Wideband site was about how small homemade businesses like theirs are still thriving in this technological world. Ifro and Radu are really cool people who've welcomed me into their home. They keep saying how I remind them of their daughter, who left a few rotats back to study in Sionar. I think it's kind of sweet. They raised her together and tried to convince her to get into the farming trade, but she wanted to break out on her own. <laughs> I guess I can kind of relate to that. Radu sat with me to discuss how their operation works. The technology that we have has allowed them to branch out so much more than even 30 rotats ago. They do imports and exports all over Seneth now and can do it comfortably from here in Druskar. Communication has become so key here and the new satellites are connecting more of our planet than ever before. Not to mention the collection and packaging machines that have been upgraded and advanced. Long ago, you would need to have hordes of people out with rakes and baskets to collect the salt. Now it's all done with skimmers and can almost be completely automated. There was some concern for the people who would be put out of jobs due to the automation, but Many of them just transitioned into maintenance for the skimmers and upkeep of the general farming requirements. Others found that new technology allowed them to create new industries without having to leave their homes. So there wasn't really any sort of downsizing at all. I'll send along the whole article in case you really want to get into the details. Druskar is also famous for not just salt, but food. Bro, the food here is so good. I was introduced to one dish that I can't get enough of. Cured tureva, served on a sea kelp bed. You might think it sounds impossibly salty, but they use this really spicy paste they make from a local plant to offset the salt flavor. Ugh, I wish I could send you a jar. It's enough to curl your flaps. And the sweets. There's a local company that repurposed all these old seawater distillation tanks to make syrups, and you can put them on anything. Everywhere you go, someone's offering you a sticky dessert as a way to welcome a stranger. I wouldn't say that I'm completely working for myself right now. I have a few sponsors that donate funds to my wideband site to help cover costs. Uh, two of them may be mom and dad, but I don't know if they count as sponsors. They help with travel and some food costs. I can't wait till they see my bill from this visit, even if most of the desserts have been free. Overall, though, it's been nice to not have any sort of boss telling me about deadlines or specific work I need to do. The flip side to that is that I am that boss. It takes a lot of self-motivation to keep up with articles and dig up stories to post. I just tell myself that I have people out there that want to hear these stories, and that helps me to keep swimming. Don't worry about me, big bro. One of the extra courses I took in my classes was some self-defense. There was one incident along the transit ways out from Laar where a shady-looking couple of people thought that I looked vulnerable and lost. As they approached, I assumed my stance, and I had my donabata handy. Once they saw that I could handle myself and wasn't an easy mark, they quickly turned away and left me alone. Most of the people I've met have been incredibly nice, though. Even with this incident, I had others that noticed what was happening and started to head over. I appreciate your concern. Maybe I should find a way to send you a Donabata so you can use it on that professor that was giving you a hard time. I'm so glad to hear that Frida did so well in her race. Given what you've been saying about her, I shouldn't have doubted it. I'm sure at some point she's going to find something that she isn't good at and we can both get a fin up on her. 
How is she at cooking? I've been learning a lot from watching the chefs here in Dreskar. <sighs> Who are we kidding? She's probably opening up her own line of restaurants right now. Send a recording of this band she's in. I would love to have something to listen to while I'm in the streams. I'm attaching a few more of my interstellar virtual postcards. There's some shots of the salt farms, and even one of me hanging off the balcony of Ifro's place. I also included a picture of some local kids swimming in the salt pools. The water there is so salty that you float right at the surface, no matter how hard you try to dive deep. It's fun, but it sure dries out your skin if you stay in too long. One of the great things about being so far away from any of the big cities is the night sky. You can see Chone and Chona so clearly from here. Do you see that small dot between them? That's you! Here's a photo of me waving at you. My travels are going to continue along the northern coastline. There are a few smaller towns along the way, but I'm aiming for some place that has a nice big soft bed soon. My Tarob and Tikar are great for when I'm between locations, but they aren't the most comfortable for long-term stays. And salt farmers aren't that big on luxury, it turns out. May the waves guide you, Ori. Log entry, Heimavina 31, 2305, Age of Enlightenment. Hey, hey, Ori. Thanks again for the pictures. Every time I see your world, I'm struck by how beautiful and different it is from Heimavina. Beautiful beaches, azure water. Heimavina is beautiful in its own right, but in a much more stark and unforgiving way. I'm also jealous of your travels. It must be fascinating to see new places and meet the people who live there. And I have to say I wouldn't mind a sticky dessert right now. Those sound really good. Are you sure the sea salt industry on Bella is actually a business? It seems to me more like a vacation. Automated skimmers, centralized processing, sunshine, and calm sea breezes. That is a way more enjoyable process than we use, though I'm not really all that familiar with it. I'm sure it involves freezing cold water and some sort of geothermal heating, but I'm afraid to ask my grandfather about it, unless you really are interested. He and my grandma expanded the family farm to aquaculture a decade or so ago, and he started an artisanal sea salt brand on the side. He's very proud of it, and refuses to shut up if asked how it works. And if I ask him, he'll go on and on and on, and I will end up forgetting what I even asked him about to begin with. Well, I did it. Yesterday was graduation day. I can't believe I actually finished my degrees. Two years ago, I would have taken a job as a Thionan serving coffee. No joke. The amount of work I had to do really wore me down there for a while. But I stuck with it. I'm not sure if it was the fear of my mom's disapproval or that Frida had just completed that sailing stunt of hers. Maybe it was my own inner drive and focus. Or maybe it was your encouragement. That's it. We're going to go with that one. Thanks, Leela. Mana are nuts for ceremonies, and the customs surrounding graduations are no exception. This marked my fourth and final ceremony, which is something of a rarity. In the wake of the Siddhist Anda, and the collapse of ancient Mana civilization, the preservation of knowledge became so important that it bordered on religion. Many of our customs and superstitions are born out of the slow decay of centuries of hard-won knowledge as the ancients struggled to maintain what little they were able to salvage. The simple necessities of survival drove the preservation of knowledge related to things like farming, fishing, and animal husbandry. Other things were relegated to myth and legend. Those few who chose to maintain more esoteric knowledge, including the sciences, became the equivalent of mystics, and over time developed rituals that we still observe today. Achieving deeper levels of ancient knowledge was marked by the priest's robes and hoothfler. Our graduation ceremonies today still have some of those same traditions, though we've altered them a little bit. The various robes are worn so that you can see all the different colors. I'm now entitled to five layers of robes, which I was required to wear for the ceremony. And Ori, I can't tell you how heavy those things are. I'm grateful the ceremony was in the spring, otherwise I might have passed out. And because I'm going to be teaching for a while yet, 
I have to keep all of them and will have to wear them at formal university functions. Yay! In addition to the robes, there are the hooth floor. At the ceremony, a cloth bearing the runes is wrapped around the recipient's hand and forearm, symbolizing the spiraling hooth floor that traditionally marked a priest's arm. I have already endured getting hooth floor, and it's a time-consuming and painful process. My family, being who we are and given our heritage, bears hooth floor in the specific pattern indicating their matrilineal heritage. For example, my mom and Frida bear the Nusspark pattern on the back of their hand, but I have a slightly different pattern that marks me as the son of a Nusspark that, that doesn't carry the actual family name because males don't pass the name to any children they might have. In addition to the family markings, I now have hoof floor on my inner thumb and two fingers that represent completing primary, undergraduate, and graduate school. Most mana who complete graduate school get the hoof floor because grad school is a pretty big deal. Mine are somewhat more complex, though. The postgraduate hoof floor are ancient and ritualistically represent the highest orders of the priesthood. They are also pretty large and intricate, and in my case, even more so. The process took hours, and I now have a spiraling series of runes that go from the back of my hand to the elbow. Each academic discipline has a unique set of runes, so if you're familiar with them, it's easy to identify Amana's heritage and education. Combinations are somewhat rare, and there's actually a committee that decides what they should look like if it hasn't been done before. The picture I sent along are actually of mine. They're the first combined set for theoretical particle physics and astronautical engineering. I have to say, I think they look pretty badass. And I've only seen a couple of older professors who have Huthfler as complex as mine. I'm not gonna lie, Leela. I'm really proud of my achievement, and I kinda enjoy the looks I get from others trying to decipher just what the heck is on my arm. Frida, not to be outdone, gave me a t-shirt for graduation that says, I'm not that kind of doctor. Har, har, har. Venetalenda, Helgi. You have been listening to an episode of Binary Saga, the part of Ori is read by Juliana Finch. Helgi is read by Paul Anderson. Music by Eric Matias and soundimage.org. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at The Binary Saga. For all of these links and more information, please visit binarysaga.com. If you like what we are doing, please consider leaving a review on your favorite podcast app.